You know, I'll just say it. What you see on here with me acting the way that I do, it's all a front. I am secretly a horrible, horrible person. This is a confession, y'all. Just so I don't get canceled in the future. It really is. Yeah. He's just the meanest person alive. I know. And and honestly, I just... I know eventually people are going to find out about all of the, the, the slapped faces and the... And the, um, and the amount of times of me spitting in people's faces. And also about the... Slamming tor- doors in people's face. Yeah, yeah. Telling them to... Telling Cutting them, people off. Telling them to go fornicate with themselves. And also the torture dungeon. And uh, all that other stuff in between. But anyway. Yeah, that's why we haven't done a house tour. Yeah, I mean, it's... it. It's so hard to hide because there's... It's just... There's just so much in there. I mean, the Iron Maiden, the stretcher, like the like the free weights, everything. I mean, that everything's just right there, and ugh, it's always such a mess to clean up. But either way, figured I'd just get that out of the way and let everyone know about the. Oh God, okay, I can't. <laughs> I was trying <coughs> not to laugh. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I'm going to bite the inside of my lip. (laughs) I want you to bleed. So, yeah. So, yeah. I'm just joking. Yeah. uh, If you couldn't figure that out. It went a little far. Yeah, we went pretty far with that, and I'm sorry. We, We held the joke a little too long. But, anyway. Meanest versus nicest celebrities. There's some celebrities I've met in real life who are actually genuinely good people. Um, Craig Parker, who uh, played one of the... Uh, uh, he was the lead elf at the Battle of uh, the Battle of Helm's Deep. Remember the one that mm. died in Aragorn's arms? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he... And also he was... He was the, uh, the main bad guy in... Um, uh, uh, Glaber. He was the uh, main bad guy in uh, Spartacus: Blood and Sand. Oh. Oh boy. Oh, that show. Jesus. And he is just such a genuinely sweet person. He came over, and he saw that we had these uh, these Wolverine gloves. Mm-hmm. In uh, uh, you know, they were like it was almost like Freddy Krueger like hobo gloves, mm-hmm. but with Wolverine's claws. Interesting. He saw that, and he was just like. Mike, can, can I throw these on? I was like, I'm like, sure. And we actually did an interview with him. And he's like, mm. he's like, bro, can I wear these during the interview? And <laughs> That's I was just cool. like, and we're just like, dude, you are so nice. <laughs> you are so freaking cool, man. Huh. Awesome. And dude, like, just so nice. We talked about him, like, living in New Zealand, how he likes it here in the States. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, also, you know, just talking about future projects and also talking about. Um, but Spartacus Blood and Sand, there was actually an unfortunate passing. The uh, lead actor, Andy Whitfield, who everyone said was just an absolute sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Andy Whitfield died from cancer at the, like, the very young age of like 38. Mm. And we, I talked to Craig about that. I was just like, so during that time, you know, was like the, the process of like moving forward with Spartacus. And he was just like, oh, everyone was just like, just, we, we held each other up. We held each other mm-hmm. up. And Liam, Liam, uh, the guy who replaced Andy Whitfield, basically they welcomed him with open arms, embraced him, and they said, oh, and, and, "And Liam's just such a, just such a sweet guy." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Damn, I, I like you, dude." It's like, <laughs> I was like, I shook his hand. He gave, and he actually gave me a hug. I was just oh, like, cool. I was just like, dude, you also smell super nice, dude. Like, how the <laughs> hell? You've been at this convention all day, walking around. How do you not smell like? How do you not smell horrible? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and then uh, Ken Kersinger, who played uh, Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Just a teddy bear. Just mm-hmm. a big old teddy bear. Who was just, he, he was just like, he was just like, you know, everyone says that I won in Freddy vs. Jason because, you know, I was the one who, like, walked out of the, the lake with his head in my hand. Mm-hmm. But I like to think that, you know, 
we both won and we both lost. Like oh. he, didn't, he he didn't want to be like a like a, a conceited jerk about anything. Yeah. And he was more than happy to discuss like like his favorite stunts versus the ones that hurt him the worst and everything. Oh, it was so cool. Like getting to meet those people and and also like Lou Temple. Uh, got to meet uh, George Perez, who's an amazing comic book artist. Mm -hmm. I miss doing that. I miss going to conventions, which hopefully we'll be able to do that again here soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll go to PAX East. Who knows? Maybe we'll see you all there. Yeah. But I've encountered some mean celebrities as well. Not sure if any of them are are in this, but I guess uh, we'll see. Uh, I could probably discuss it after we're done watching this video, but... Uh, Sunny V2 has a list of the meanest versus the nicest celebrities. Let's see which ones he brings up. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Who are the five nicest celebrities and who are the five of, meanest? Yeah, Bill Nye's a dick. I ever met uh oh. Her name is Ellen DeGeneres. But while all the evidence yeah, Ellen DeGeneres. is being She's awful, a... Adam Sandler is always highlighted yes. as being incredibly kind. Take for example Adam is the time super he was refused yeah. a table at IHOP after the server failed to realize it was Adam Sandler asking. Embarrassed, the server shared the CCTV to TikTok, prompting Adam Sandler to meet with the waitress personally while joking about the rejection by stating, for the record I only left the IHOP because the nice woman told me the all you can eat deal didn't apply to the milkshakes although fans were impressed for a slightly different reason. Awesome. It's very humble of him to not assert that he's a celebrity and ask for special treatment. He acted just like a regular customer and didn't challenge yeah. anyone. I respect him for that with mm -hmm. his humble attitude extending to wedding photo bombs <laughs> he appeared for some chicken. Hi guys. Hey. No way. <laughs> 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 I was just saying, just imagine like we're we're hanging out somewhere, and all of a sudden Adam Sandler just walks in and just like, Sandman, yeah. what's up, dude? <laughs> that would be really cool. I, I would just like just be like, dude, did, if if please, like, I just want to say thank you for all you've done, and I love your work, man. Yeah, thank you. He's such an amazing actor. Well, he and here's the thing: a lot of people know him for like the comedy stuff, which. Yeah, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, uh, uh, The Water Boy, Big Daddy. You know, good comedies in their own right. And, you know, there's there's people who don't like them. I like them personally. Doesn't he sing that Hanukkah song? Yeah. Oh, yeah. he sung, sung multiple. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> David Lee Roth lights the menorah. So does James Conkirk, Douglas, and the Weasel, Polly Shora. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song so much. <laughs> so many Jews are in the showbiz. <laughs> Gosh, some people think that Ebenezer Scrooge is, but he's not. But guess who is, baby? All three Stooges. <laughs> Gosh. And also just like... His his whole deal is uh, uh sorry there's a little thing that popped up on the TV. His whole deal is like he's always just tried to be himself. Yeah. And when he's done the comedy stuff, I, I know it's run dry with a lot of people nowadays. It's ran dry with me. I haven't really found his comedies that appealing. But his drama stuff, where he actually like acts and he actually like puts himself out there as an emotional character, mm -hmm. like, like flick. Yeah, flick or or you mean click or click. Yeah, Sorry. Click. It's I said okay. Flick. It's okay. Click. Yeah, click. <laughs> click was comedy and drama, and the whole like the most endearing part of that was like when his dad like is the last memory yeah. of his dad, mm -hmm. and he was just like, and that he was movie like, always makes me he was cry. he was trying to like rewind back to like when the funeral was, and then Chris Walken comes up behind, he's like, you weren't there. Mm. Mm. That it's horrible. It is, and it teaches a good lesson about enjoying life. And not one, and not fast forwarding through everything, not yeah, because you never know what when, you'll miss when or when the last time you'll speak to someone or that's, see someone will be. That's the truth as well, yeah. So and also, I can I am I can attest to that. Yeah. So. Uh, but also, Uncut Gems was really good. Have you seen that one? Mm -mm. That one, that one was so good. And that one was that one was like a, a thriller slash drama, mm -hmm. and he plays like a diamond merchant who is like massively in debt and is just like trying to hustle his way mm -hmm. out of the pit that he's in. Oh my gosh, super good. But anyway, yeah, sorry we've 
<laughs> we've already we've we've already paused way too much. Yep. Wait, you're joking. He filmed a good chunk of Mr. Deeds in my hometown, and he was simply the nicest <coughs> man ever. He would come out to sign autographs after a full 14 plus hour day of shooting. Didn't matter how long the line was, he made sure every single person got to say hello. He had time for photographs and chats with everyone in town, frequented all the local coffee shops and posed with employees. He seemed to really care and know how excited we all were to have a movie happening and always had a smile. Although Adam's fans awesome. are the only people to talk very highly of him you guys uh, love each other is yeah. that yeah. is that fair to say for sure, sure. Absolutely. yeah i hear each of you individually talking about the other in such fond terminology yeah after pete davidson yeah. <laughs> worked with adam sandler on saturday night live pete went on to state he's just such a cool nice guy i can't explain how wonderful of a person he is just like caring and sweet and not full of crap which is very rare to find but while adam sandler's happy on-screen mood clearly extends to his personal <laughs> life mike myers from austin powers Ooh. is a Oh yeah, I heard heard a lot of shit about Mike. Oof much different when the cameras aren't rolling. Twitter users exposed Mike Myers as an absolute nightmare to work with. Mm. The article referred to a tweet reading, Mike Myers had me fight off the set of The Love Guru because I made eye contact with him and I was there as his bodyguard. The tweet had mm. been posted by a person named Jay Brody, who then expanded on the incident in a podcast. You'll be basically I read, I, Mike I read about this, and honestly, the fact that he doesn't want people to look him in the eye like imagine Why? It, 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 he says that it's an insecurity thing with him and it takes him out of like being in character and like dude you're an actor i was always taught like to make eye contact because w not making eye contact is like rude you know it can like, be very rude yes but for that for him to like make that a thing like if you make eye contact with me i'll get you fired mm-hmm that's such a dick move, yeah, man. Yeah, really. Especially if he's your bodyguard, where this guy's gonna be around you, protecting you, making sure that no creepy people come into your trailer right. and try to like stab you or anything. It's like, it's like, it's like, dude, Austin Powers is such a shit film. You're gonna fucking die. It, like, who's you gonna be there? You never know stop what it? could happen. And no, like, you don't. The guy accidentally makes eye contact with you, and you're gonna get him fired. That's such I mean, shit behavior. Mm. Sorry, but yeah. Mike Myers, there's a reason why a lot of people don't like Mike Myers. Myers' trailer. They're like, here's the catch. Can't look at him. But I realized, like, I can't let just anyone into the trailer. So I look up. I catch his eye for a second. I give him a nod to let him know I'm cool. And then I look away. And within an hour, I get a phone call letting me know that I'm fired and I have to get <laughs> that. Prompting others to give their own anecdotes about Mike Myers' terrible attitude. I was an extra in Love Guru and remember being told we can't make eye contact with Mike. When I tell people this, they don't believe me. Thanks for confirming. People <laughs> always wonder why there weren't more Austin Powers movies, but never realize how many stories there are like this about him. Basically, no one wants to work with the guy, with one of these other stories coming from the set of The Cat in the Hat, where Mike's co-star Amy Hill stated, his area was all covered with tenting because he didn't want anybody seeing him. It was so weird, it was just the worst, I was miserable. Hill also revealed how Diva Myers selfishly kept everyone waiting for hours, overruled the director, and even had someone standing by, just holding his personal chocolates in a dish. It was what in the world? Okay. That is... Mm. I can see why The Cat in the Hat is such a shit film. Overruled yeah. the director. Mm. No wonder. It was just a horrible, nightmarish experience, although people have only ever said Steve the opposite Buscemi. about Steve Buscemi. Buscemi yes. worked as a New York firefighter before quitting to pursue acting. Really? Although yeah. when the Twin he Towers was a were firefighter? Oh, yeah. Wow. A lot of people don't know that. And also... A lot... I didn't know that. Yeah, he also... I, I actually looks like Sonny's going to talk about it here, but he did this, and it, I instantly was just like, let me this see what destroyed on September 11, Buscemi walked into his old fire department to volunteer, working oh, 12 wow. hours a day for a week straight in the hopes of finding survivors. He wow. called his old firehouse, then receiving no reply, headed to the site, where he found his former engine company. I asked if I could join them, he said, adding I could tell they were a little suspicious at first, but I worked with them that day. It was a privilege to be able to do it. It was great to connect with the firehouse I used to work with and with some of the guys I worked alongside. Note, this was in 2000. Hell yes, dude. Wow. That is, uh, you see, there are so many people out there who are just, like, I get it. Life is difficult. Life has a lot of going on. 
But the fact that this guy, at this point in his career, was already, like, considered by me to be, like, one of the best new actors out there. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, like, it's just after Fargo, it, one of his star-making roles. And everyone was just, like, like wondering, like, oh, this guy's awesome. wonder what he's going to do next. Mm-hmm. And for him to be doing this and be going into, like... Like be going into such a dangerous place, like the you know ground zero at nine eleven right. to pull people out of the rubble, dude. That's... Like you are like mm-hmm. Steve. If I ever meet you in real life, Steve Buscemi, I would love to shake your hand and salute you for everything that you've done because not just well as an actor that's one thing, but as a human being and as a person who is compassionate and truly wishes to help people. Yeah. You, my friend, are are truly one of the good ones. 2001, after he was already extremely famous from movies such as Fargo, yet according to an independent article on his volunteering, very few photographs and no interviews exist because he declined them. He wasn't there for publicity. Wouldn't you think you were hallucinating Jesus. if Steve Buscemi helped you out of the rubble? <laughs> wow. guy with a... <coughs> that'd be pretty, yeah, that'd be that pretty crazy. Be crazy. Like, all of a sudden, it's just like, <laughs> we got one over here. And you're, like, digging him out. And then, like, you grab his hand and you pull him out. All of a sudden, the guy's just like, oh, thank you so... Steve Buscemi? <laughs> yeah, it's like, Wait, whoa. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, God, I'm dead, aren't I? No, no, you're not dead. Come on, get out. Come on, come on, let's go. Yeah. It's like, we gotta get you, gotta get you to an ambulance. My God. The Reddit comment then offering a slightly more personal story. I used to serve him all the time and he never once was a diva. Always had a smile on his face. And I mean, I don't even think he once had a complicated order. He always ordered the most simple thing on the menu and always tipped 20 plus percent. Not mm. to mention Buscemi gets extra credit oh, for being close to him and Adam. Are, Adam, awesome. him and Adam are like really good friends. They've yeah. worked together so many times. Mm-hmm. However, it seems Jerry Seinfeld oh, has left out of the party. Yep. Given every clip of him I've seen outside of his shows is just him being an unlikable douche with an ego the size of a small country. Mm. The sentiment began with I would say an ego the size of like a of like a of like a star. Of like a friggin' like like supernova. Mm. Jesus. This guy this guy has the ego like to match everything. Not only that, but he's also worth half a billion dollars. So he doesn't need to be an asshole. He is because it's just who he is. Yeah. That's the shitty thing. With a Larry King interview from 2007. Oh, yeah, dude, I have my gripes against Larry King, but what Seinfeld did, he I remember this interview. This is when I started to not like Jerry Seinfeld. Because... Mm. I went off the air. I was the number one show on television, Larry. You were Do all you know who I am? 75 million viewers. Okay. Last episode. What? You don't it take like it so dance. bad. Well, that's a, a big difference between being canceled and being number one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bean movie Can we get a resume in here for Bean me? movie opens tomorrow. Over? Although this attitude... Ex- yeah. Right there. Why? Because he... Because he... He, he hates when people, like... Uh, Here's the thing. He can joke all he wants to. He can tell all the jokes and make all the, like, off-references that he wants to. But the very moment someone does it to him, oh, no, you're not allowed to do that. I'm Jerry fucking Seinfeld. You, like, mm. like I'm the jokester. You're not the jokester. You're not funnier than me. There's a reason I'm worth half a billion dollars, and you're not. That's literally the attitude that he has. Power trip. Yes. But I used oh, to watch that show when I was a kid. Oh, I like, I like the show. Besides, he's he's not my favorite Our person. Our friend Lee acts just like him sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Although I will say this, Jerry Seinfeld is that. not my favorite part of the Seinfeld right. show. Right. Yeah, for sure. Oh no, George Costanza, Lorraine, and Kramer are all just as good, if not way better, characters than Jerry than Jerry is on the yeah, show. Yeah, for sure. And of course, I was just saying that Newman. Lee Lee has. Lee has tendencies to act like Seinfeld. Seinfeld, like from the show. Not yeah, not him. in real life. No, yeah. Lee. Lee is Lee is awkward as hell, but we love him for it. Yes, that's the beautiful thing about yes. him. He's genuinely like a nice person, right. and I'd love to get him on here and like do like do recordings with him one yeah, day. Yeah, that would be Cause, cool. Because he's he's just him and Megan. That would oh be fun. yeah, them together. Yes. that'd be perfect. <laughs> Extends into other moments like the time. Oh, dude. Oh. oh, I remember this. Isn't that Kesha? Yes. Yeah. Such a dick. Such a dick, yeah, dude. Yeah, I remember seeing this. He rejected Kesha. I love you so much. 
Oh, thanks. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please? No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no thanks. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> that was a nice moment. I don't know who that was. Uh, it doesn't surprise me he doesn't know who that is because, you know, he's in his own world. But, dude, if someone wanted to give me a hug, like, for something, for no reason, dude, absolutely. Right. Like, that's the thing. I was at a convention, and we were talking to these people mm -hmm. who were dressed up as, like, characters from Hell of a Boss, and they were just like, oh, wait, they were dressed up like, yeah, yeah. Oh, who were they dressed as? Uh, one was dressed as Blitz, and one was dressed as uh, Millie. Oh, that's cool. And I was just like, I was just like, talking to them, mm -hmm. like, dude, I love your outfit, I love your costume. And all of a sudden, one of them was just like, wait a minute, don't I know you from somewhere? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I was like, you may have seen us do some reactions to Hell of a Boss and Hazard Hudson. As soon as I say reactions, all of a sudden, he's like, oh my god, dude, <laughs> dude, come here. And he like, gives me a big old hug, and I was just like, I was just like, hey, man, hey, yeah. thanks. And he's just like, god, dude, I watched your reactions like a week ago. You guys are freaking awesome. Oh, I'm like, that thanks. Was, that's cool. Yeah, and I love going to conventions, and <clears throat> like, I remember when we got recognized like that, all of a sudden... Uh, it went from like two people talking to us to having like 20 people surrounding us all wanting to talk to us all at once. I was just That's like, cool. I was just like, oh shit. Yeah. I don't, cause I, cause Steve Bloom was like right there. You know, one of my favorite voice actors ever was like right over there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to take away from like his crowd or anything. Cause right. he, had a, he had a crowd of people there. I didn't want to like ape his crowd from him or anything like that. Right. Because that's, I'm not there to. I wasn't there presenting. I was just there to enjoy the convention. Right. But exactly. I'm not going to turn people away. Yeah. I'm never going to turn. Someone wants to shake my hand, wants my autograph, or wants to give me a hug. Dude, all the better. I love I love that shit. <clears throat> anyway. That was Kesha. Okay. Jerry then offered no apology for rejecting her. I don't hug a total stranger. <laughs> I have to meet someone, say hello. I need to know, who are you? No, and I she really... was very nice about it. We laughed about it. Did you? Yeah. Did you hug her afterwards? No. No? Uh, Leading Kesha to change her mind about him for pretty obvious reasons. What happened with uh, Jerry Seinfeld? Oh, my um, God. Are you friends with him? I am not. Okay, we're good. It was like the saddest moment of my life. Jerry also has a reputation mm. for destroying the paparazzi. The worst place, like, you bomb. I'm sure comics go through all the time. Another very weak, weak question. And after Lady Gaga was moved to his luxury basketball box for acting rudely at a game, he had this to say. This woman's a jerk. <laughs> I hate her. I can't believe they put her in my box, which they I did. paid for. This is what you give people the finger and you get upgraded? Is that the world we're living in now? It's terrible. I love it. Jerry Seinfeld's meanness definitely has a charisma to it. However, if you're wanting a more humble type oh, of person, yeah. then we have to talk about Post Malone. <clears throat> yeah, With entire yeah. compilations cool. dedicated to him treating other people kindly, there are almost too many wholesome moments to choose from. Absolutely. This? this is awesome. Hey! Thank you. There was that time he went out of his way to greet a 21-year-old having his first beer, or that time he gave his $5,000 guitar to a fan after a concert. You want a guitar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a $5,000 guitar, so you have to promise me. You gotta promise me that you're gonna take care of it. Okay? 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 Dude, wow. gifting them a Fender Telecaster. Not only his cool. Telecaster, but I think he signed it too. Yeah. Dude. Paparazzi in the opposite way to Jerry Seinfeld. Boss, I want you to know that I, I really like your music. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. That means a lot to me. Can you say hello to Nicole? We'll have hi, Nicole. Love you guys. And when this <laughs> fan somehow made it past security, Post Malone hugs the guy and treats him respectfully before he's taken off the stage. In a different instance, Post Malone let a fan come on stage to play the guitar part in Stay, and it's therefore no surprise that fans That's have told him. Cool. See, okay, there's like a shit ton of people out there I've heard talk shit about Post Malone. Oh, his music's basic, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Dude, you can say whatever the hell you want about Post Malone. I will never, ever say he is not a nice guy for what I've seen from him. Yeah. The man is, the man realizes how blessed he is to be in the position that he's in. Mm -hmm. He's worked his ass off to get where he's at, and he's done a lot of stuff that I know a lot of people out there would just be like, well, anyone could do that. It's like... Probably, but at the same time, he's the one who succeeded and stuck with exactly. it. Exactly. And you can't fault the guy for doing, for, you know, f wanting to follow his dream and actually want wanting to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And and there and obviously he's good at it because if he was shit at it, 
no one would be paying attention. Right, exactly. And, and your nephew dressed up for as him for yeah. his, uh, Halloween. Yeah, Rylan. <laughs> Gosh, he looked good, too. Yeah, he did. He looked really good. Your sister did awesome with, like, the tattoos on the face and stuff. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> oh, I love that. Anecdotal stories such as <coughs> the similar Jeez. threads had post moved into his brother's street and went and introduced himself to all his new neighbors and invited them for a barbecue. Dude, that's sounds cool. like an awesome guy. I believe this a hundred percent. He had a party in an Airbnb or something a few houses down from my group's Airbnb, and he legit went around the cul-de-sac himself, inviting everyone to the party. He also spent the entire night moving between groups, chatting, and generally being a phenomenal host and ensuring everyone had a blast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude. But while nobody has anything negative negative to say about Post Malone. It seems nobody has anything positive oh, to say Chevy. about Aww. Jesus. Chase. Remember when Pete Davidson praised Adam Sandler earlier in the video? Well, Pete had the opposite to say about Chevy Chase, stating, he's a fucking douchebag. I hate that dude. Yeah. He's just a genuinely bad racist person and I don't like him. Chevy Chase was fired from community after calling Donald Glover the N-word, not yes. to mention before the firing what? Chase. Yes, that, that was his last, the last straw with everyone. On community because there were people who defended him. He's just like, oh, he's just from a different era of comedy and this and that. Because he was one of the OGs on Saturday Night Live, you know, back in 1975. Mm -hmm. And that was a different time for comedy. You know, it was a different way of doing comedy. But that doesn't mean you need to just treat everyone around you like garbage and pretend like, oh, I'm Chevy Chase. I'm better than everybody. I, like, I'm the reason why everyone's here. It's like, no, you're not the center of atten you're not the center of the universe. Stop acting like you're the center of the fucking universe, dude. Jesus was simply difficult to work with. He was someone that did not want to be there for the hours that we yeah, had. Yeah, Joel. He sometimes could be in not great moods. <laughs> Earlier in his career, Chevy Chase had gotten into a fist fight with Bill Murray. And while interviewing yeah. Robert Downey Jr., Chase stated, didn't your father used to be a successful director? Whatever happened to him? Boy, he sure died, you know. He sure went to hell. And that sucks, especially because Robert Downey Jr.'s father just died not too long Why ago. Why would he say that? Oh because, my gosh, if somebody said that to me, I would just... Mm, oh, I know. It, I would deck them. It would take a lot to not hurt somebody if they said that about someone who I cared about greatly, who is no longer here. I can only imagine how Robert felt. I can only imagine, because that's just... It's therefore no surprise that even Will Ferrell stated the worst host was Chevy Chase. Yet uh, I've heard Chevy Chase. I've also heard Steven Seagal because Steven Seagal is just like an absolute dick as well. Because he, Steven Seagal literally, like they had all these skits written out for him and everything. And he literally was just like, no, I don't want to do that skit. It's not funny. It's like, it's like oh, okay, Steven, well, how about you rewrite it and we'll do it the way you want to do it. And he's like, okay. He rewrote it, and ever I I have never I watched all the bits and all the skits that he rewrote for Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I have never heard a crowd so quiet in my entire life. Mm. This is Saturday Night Live. People are supposed to be laughing. Right. I have never heard a crowd that quiet before, <laughs> ever. And then later on, when they said when. They were just like, well, how did you feel about the crowd? He's like, it's like, the crowd was a bunch of assholes. They didn't laugh at my stuff. Just shows you that they don't know what good comedy is. What? Yeah. Mm. Good, good job, Steven. Way to prove that you're self-centered douche. Yet Chevy Chase foolishly claims that all criticism is just jealousy. Did you just say that writers writing anything negative is jealousy? Yeah, I did. What kind of jealousy? I'm funnier than them? Yeah, I guess maybe. I'm considered good looking? Yeah, there you have it. It seems Chevy Chase needs a lesson on humility, and who better to teach it than oh. Chevy? Yeah, I love Chevy. I, I do too. Yourself. It's all about humility, and that's why I am where I am now. I humbled myself. I don't look down on people because I'd love they're lesser. Back him. in 2000... Dude. He, I, I just want to... Uh, have you seen like everyday objects that Shaq holds and it looks like a bit like it almost like he yeah. held a water bottle in his hand it looked like a baby it looked like how like a little baby bottle would look yeah. in my hand it's like <laughs> Jesus man holding up a gallon of milk with two fingers just like just like just yeah I was like oh my god <laughs> I would love to meet him because he seems like a genuinely sweet person yeah. now also I'd love to you know just like he told a funny story when he was on one of Logan Paul, when on Logan Paul's podcast. 
Mm. He literally was just, he's like, he's like, yeah, me and my friends, we was at the zoo and uh, I was there with the gorillas and the gorillas were like, I, I go over there and I mess with them. I go in there and the gorillas, they go crazy when they see me. <laughs> and he's like, you can laugh. It's okay. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> and he's, just, he's like, every time I go in the gorilla exhibit, the gorillas would come up. I'd be up next to the glass and then the biggest gorilla would come up to the glass and just do this. Just go. <laughs> he, he said <coughs> he said that there was this one zoo where uh, like a nine foot six like albino gorilla mm-hmm. saw him saw Shaq one time yeah and like tried to break the door open to get out oh wow and almost did and uh, Logan was just like ah Shaq I think you could take a gorilla he's like no I cannot <laughs> He's like, if that, he's like, if that gorilla gets out, what are you doing? He's like, I'm running the other way. Yeah. He's like, good luck, everybody else. I'm gone. The coolest thing I've seen him do is he just walks up to, like, kids on the street playing basketball oh, yeah. and just, like, gives them pointers and stuff. And yeah, like, yeah. Like, how to work on, like, their, yeah. like, pick and roll and, like, like yeah. layups and all that. I, I just think he's so cool. Also, there was another time where uh, this cop got called on these kids playing basketball. Mm-hmm. The cop came out there, and the cop was like, the cop w- was cool with him. The cop knew the neighborhood and mm-hmm. everything, and he like dapped uh, the kids up, and he actually shot a jump shot, made a jump shot, and it made nationwide news. Shaq heard about this, and Shaq went out there with that same cop. Mm-hmm. And they both got out of the cop car, and everyone like that was on camera yeah. lost their fucking. Just, yeah. It's Shaq! Oh my god! <laughs> and Shaq went out there, took pictures with him, played a little one on one, or played a little one on one with like people who were talking smack and all that. Yeah. He's, he's like, don't make me, don't make me run you over. <laughs> I may be old, but I'm still Shaq Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> I love Shaq, dude. 2011, Shaq had hit rock bottom. He'd retired from basketball, divorced from his wife, yeah. and had no idea where his life was going next. I was lost. 76 <coughs> square foot house by yourself. No kids. Go to the gym. Nobody's playing in the gym. You go to their room. Nobody's there. It was during this yeah. period that Shaq's mom, Lucille, gave him some advice. And then the queen, Dr. Lucille O'Neill, said, Hey, man, I don't know you no more. You need to humble yourself. And when mama mm. talk, the true man listens. Afterwards, yeah. Shaq began working on becoming a better person. <laughs> It state, the day I killed the narcissist Shaq is the day my kids text me, hey daddy, I miss you. Bro, when I got one of those texts, man, oh, I man. actually cried then. I didn't know what to say. After I got that love from them, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be the asshole Shaq no more because I was an asshole and I lost everything. The day I released all that me, 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 Shaq, 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 Shaq is the day the blessings opened up. As a result, Shaq's been Hell trying yeah. to create a fairly unique legacy. Talk about legacies. I want mine to be one sentence. Shaq was a nice guy. Which has been aided by his random acts of kindness, purchasing bikes, shoes, and yep. laptops for less yeah. fortunate children. It seems the only people Shaq won't give money to are his... <laughs> yeah, that's he his, does... That's his, his eldest son right there, yeah, Sharif. He, oh, my God. That was another thing I was going to talk about, is he talked about how he teaches his kids how to... Financial, like, financial, responsibility. Yeah, responsibility and also, like... Um, generational wealth, like investing and stuff. Of course, yeah. yeah. And Shaq, Shaq has like invested a lot in himself in terms of like personal wealth and all that, creating mm-hmm. generational wealth. Because yeah. that's the thing, you need to be smart with your money, everybody. That's the thing. Because this trip, you only get one, and when the money stops coming, like it, a lot of times it doesn't come back. Right. And you need to you need to take care of it while you can because. In the end, it's just like you can be rich for like six months, or if you're smart, you can stretch that wealth out and be and be rich for the rest of your life, and then leave something behind for your kids if they, you know, it, you know, for like everything else. Right. And Shaq's been good about that. He actually said the first uh, meeting he had with like these banker people, like he was talking to. There, like, there were all these people just like, we're going to invest like this much in like this campaign, this much in that campaign. And then Shaq was just like, oh, all right, that's all well and good. But then he met this one guy. He said it was this this Jewish banker that came to meet him. He's just like, Shaq, I'm going to level with you. You got big money. But if you want to keep that money, here are three steps that you need to take in order to not only keep that money, but make that money stack up mm-hmm. to where you'll have this and you'll have that. And then Shaq was just like, I'm going to go with this guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because he knew, like, he knew, like, 
this guy meant business. Yeah. Anyway. Done kids. Because I believe in respectable nepotism. You get all A's this next semester, you can get whatever you want. So he gets all A's, and I was like, go to the dealership and pick one. Then I get a call from Tesla. I said, man, you better take your ass across the street to Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I will say, if his son was over there trying to buy a Model 3, I mean, dude. I mean, it's, it costs about the same as a Honda, yeah, actually. I would, like, I would be like, I'd be like, Dad, it's a Model 3. He's like, how much does it cost? Like, yeah. Like, 35000 35000 All right, we can do that. As long as you ain't trying to get no Model S, like, 120000 He's like, no, Dad, I ain't stupid. He's like, he's like, good. I raised my son right. You ain't stupid. <laughs> is an obvious choice as a nice celebrity someone you might not expect to be mm. rude is bill nye the yep. science guy what yes bill nye you want to talk about ego this guy just mm, who here's the thing i used to love bill nye he used mm -hmm. to be huge yeah bill nye the science guy right. bill 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 I, I loved those videos when i was a kid mm -hmm. but then when you actually like find out who he is and like his personality and just how he treats people and how he sees people. Oof. Just no words. I met Bill Knight as a kid and he was the biggest asshole I've ever met. It was a huge letdown after watching his show so often in class. My science teacher from seventh grade told us she had an explanation for why she tried to show us as few Bill Knight videos as possible. I believe she said she attended either a science workshop or an event for teachers where Bill Nye was there and he was completely rude to her and dismissed her the whole time. Bill's dark side becomes pretty obvious when he debates other scientists. However, it yeah, seems he becomes the meanest him. when talking to his most popular demographic, kids. Bill Bill Nye came to visit my university. I was sorely disappointed. Bill Nye relied on sexist jokes to relate to the crowd. He kept complimenting women's legs and saying weird stuff about how sexy women are. He was trying to be relatable, but was sorely mistaken as he faced a crowd of That's driven female engineers creepy. and scientists. He went on about climate change and basically insinuated that we could be the policy changers while the real scientists did the real work. I couldn't believe how much my views of him were falling apart as I watched him pander to students he clearly didn't care about. I later heard that he would and speak with students only professors with this anecdote following the very common theme of Bill Nye was my hero until I heard him talk. Although thankfully Keanu Reeves hey. is the perfect balance between good and evil. While filming the second two Matrix movies Keanu Reeves chose to give up 75 million worth of his movie yes. earnings. See that was you see he was guaranteed a percentage mm -hmm. of whatever the movie made at the box office. Yeah. And after he found out how much he made he was like that's too much. Here, give like, I'll keep this. Give the rest of it to the like to the to the crew, mm -hmm. like the VFX crew. I think you, yeah. I th they used to the VFX crew and like the martial arts like martial arts choreography crew. But yeah, dude said redirecting the money to the special effects team who he said deserved it more. Yes. Even then, this might not have been his most charitable act whilst filming. As a Reddit user stated, a family friend builds movie sets, doesn't design, is one of the poor dudes that just builds. Anyways, he worked on the set for The Matrix and Keanu heard about family trouble he was having and gave him a $20,000 Christmas bonus to help him out. Oh, Although money cool. isn't the only thing that Keanu has given up. In 2011, he was candidly filmed giving up his seat on the New York subway and three years later in 20. 2014, he waited patiently for 20 minutes in the rain outside the rap party of his own film Daughter of God after a mix-up because he didn't want to cause a scene. He didn't say, hey, I'm Keanu Reeves, or yo man, this is my party, once to the bouncer, and the owner of the club was horrified when he found out afterwards that the actor was standing in the rain. It's therefore no surprise that there's an extremely popular subreddit dedicated to <laughs> Keanu Reeves being awesome. Yes. Although if there's one person... Oh my gosh, she's puppies. puppies. Who could offset this kindness with meanness? It's definitely Ellen DeGeneres. Mm. Oh. I've heard how Ellen DeGeneres, more like it. Jesus. Yeah, I've now heard how bad she's been. You know? Yeah. On to people like uh, her crew, especially the people yeah. who work for, her, just treating them like absolute garbage, and just telling them like, well, it, that her excuse is always like, oh, if you think I'm bad, then you won't last two seconds in this town. You should just quit. Every time. 
You know, like Ellen DeGeneres always talks about, she's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match everyone with $2 to LA Food Bank. This was the tweet that started her downfall, as nobody could have expected how bad the responses would be. When I was 15, the Ellen Show was doing a contest of fans making a bust of her and sending it to her. I worked so hard on this and even wrote her a letter. Weeks later, she used it as a prop in a game and gave it away to a random person with $500 attached to the bottom. Working for her, I was instructed that I can't look her in the eye and never ever say hi to her first. Why is it always about not looking her in the eye? Why is that? But don't worry, she definitely won't be saying hi to you in the first place. She creates the most toxic environment for her staff. I worked at Real Food Daily, served her and Portia a brunch. She wrote a letter to the owner and complained about my chipped nail polish, not that it was on her plate, but just that it was on my hand. I'd worked till closing the night wow. before, and this was the next morning, almost got me fired. Chris Pontius Jesus. stated on Steve-O's podcast that he wasn't surprised to hear these anecdotes. It's crazy that all this stuff's come out, like about Ellen being mean, because when I met her, I thought she was really mean like and she's like so what do i gotta do and she's just pissed to be there and then she comes out on stage and she's like all like funny nice ellen you know like the, the person that they think she wow. is and apparently neither were the mm. 10 employees who came forward four months later to expose her terrible working environment toxic phony hypocrite liar that's what she is we were told from the very beginning don't talk to ellen don't do this you can't go into her office it was very nerve-wracking very stressful we all walked on eggshells all the time as a result ellen mm. took a 14 week hiatus returning with a pretty standard apology sometimes i get sad i get mad i i get anxious i get frustrated i get impatient and i am working on all of that however this failed to ensure a returning audience as in may 2022 ellen's show was cancelled completely who were the f damn well there you go ellen degeneres just it's not surprising that she was on the the bad list no, no not at all i mean the good list you know keanu reeves adam sandler steve buscemi shaquille o'neal post malone i mean come on man yeah. nice nice people and then you know on the bad list mike myers bill nye uh jerry seinfeld and uh uh ellen degeneres i just wow i i'm actually not surprised about like a lot of the people on this list being good and bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, Keanu Reeves, I mean, the dude is just, is just, it, once again, these people are humble and they... They haven't let the wealth go to their head. They have let, like, they've, they've let themselves be like in the moment and enjoy the moment. Yeah. And are thankful for every moment that they're able to live the life that they have. I mean, Shaq, I mean... A seven foot two, 320 pound behemoth of a man who is like unstoppable in his day. Mm -hmm. One of the most freaky. Like, I watched Shaq from like, I remember the first time I ever saw him. I was five years old. Mm -hmm. It was 1993. <clears throat> and the first time I ever saw him, I, I thought I was looking at a superhero. I legit thought I was looking at a real life superhero. Mm -hmm. because of just how big he was, how fast he was, how strong he was. I remember they showed a highlight of him literally ripping the backboard off of a basketball goal. Wow. And I was like, that is Superman. That is a literal Superman right there. And when you find out, like, you want to know the interesting thing about Shaq? He was that dominant, he was that good, and he never worked out. Wow. He never worked out. That was the thing. That's just how much of a freak athlete he was. I can only imagine how, how amazing he would have been if he if he'd have worked out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he probably instead of just having, you know, four rings, he'd have like eight, ten rings. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Just if he was that dominant without working out, Jesus. And Keanu Reeves, I mean, he could have very easily cashed in his chips and just been that Hollywood hot guy from like the 90s and stuff like that mm -hmm. and never done anything else. But instead, he actually wanted to challenge himself as an artist and actually like keep like evolving his game. Right. Because like I remember people talking for so long. It was like, like in the mid 90s, they were just like, oh, Keanu Reeves is dead. His career's dead. He's never coming back. Then he does The Matrix. 
Mm-hmm. And they were just like, oh, we all knew Keanu Reeves was, 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 was out there, and he could come back at any time. And then in the 2000s, everyone was talking shit about it. It's like, oh, Keanu Reeves, he's, he's like box office poison. No one wants to see Keanu Reeves. Then he does the John Wick films. Now what? Now I what have people got to say? I haven't seen that, but I heard it's really good. The John Wick films? Yeah. They are, there's four of them. They are all amazing. Yeah. They're all great. Oh, well, anyway, we're going to end it here, everybody. This was uh, The Meanest versus Nicest Celebrities by Sunny V2. We hope you all enjoyed. And I guess until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.